to show the components in different locations and positions, and are typically used to show the range of motion of an assembly or mechanism. For example, you can check that the positions of components at certain constraint values meet all requirements. You can also check that you have enough clearance at different positions. This stapler has three moving components, the staple holder assembly, the staple holder top, and the stapler top assembly. The angles between the components change as you staple pages and when you load staples. In this lesson, I'll show you how to use pause reps to show the components in the different positions. I'll expand the representations folder, and you can see that there are two pause reps, master and stapler start. Like other representations, master has the default settings. To activate the stapler start pause rep, I'll right click and select activate. The components immediately move to their new position until the bottom of the stapler holder touches the staple plate. When I expand the staple holder in the browser, notice that the stapler position constraint is in bold, indicating it has a value different than the master. I've also renamed the constraints that control the stapler positions so that I can easily see what each constraint does. Creating pause reps is simple and very similar to creating view reps. I'll create a new pause rep that shows the position of the stapler top assembly after it ejects a staple. The staple holder assembly and staple holder top will stay in place, but the stapler top will move. Since I just want to change the position of the stapler top, I'll create a new pause rep based on staple start. To do this, I'll right click on staple start and select copy. Next, I'll change the name to staple eject and activate it by double-clicking on it. When I expand the staple holder top component, there is an angle constraint called Eject Staples. When I click on it, the edit box doesn't display. This is because pause reps only temporarily change constraint values. When you switch to another pause rep, Inventor needs to retrieve the default constraint value, so you override the value locally instead of editing it globally. If I right-click in the browser, notice that some of the menu items have changed. For example, I can't edit a constraint. To change the position of the staple holder top, I'll click on Modify Override. Change the value to 0 degrees. And the top moves down. If I toggle between the two pause reps, you can see the change. Next, I want to show the stapler in the load staples position. I want this rep based on the master, so I'll start a new pause rep by right-clicking the position folder and selecting New. I'll rename it to Staple-Load. I don't know the exact value I want for the stapler position, so I need to move the top until I find an angle that looks good. To do this, I'll suppress the load staples constraint by right-clicking on the constraint and selecting Suppress. Now I can drag the top to a new position. Note the staple holder stays in position, and the stapler top and staple holder dash top move. I want to find the angle for the override value, so I'll start the measure angle tool, and then select edges on the components to get the angle. I'll round this value up to 100 when I override the constraint. Instead of having to manually switch the suppression state and override the value, I want to show you a different way to do this that gives you more control. I'll select the constraint, right click in the browser, and select Override. This displays the Override Object dialog box, which has a number of options for changing pause rep settings. At the top of the dialog is a drop down menu for selecting the positional representation. This lets you change the constraint in several pause reps at once. The Relationship tab is active by default. The Suppression State option is active, and it is set to Suppressed. I'm going to override the value, so I'll change it to Enable. Next, I'll activate the Value field and enter 100. On the Pattern tab, you can shift the location of rectangular patterns and the starting angle of circular patterns. Pause reps only let you change the position of items, 
so you can't change the number of objects in the pattern or the spacing. The Component tab lets you modify options like Grounded and the flexible status of subassemblies. For this assembly, I only need to override the angle of the staple holder top, so I'll click OK. And the browser updates to show the constraint status is enable, and the value is set to 100 degrees.